So you know our podcast, uh, Unashamed, is uh, quite popular. we got a lot of folks that are listening, a lot of folks that are watching. And so uh, the good folks uh, at Blaze TV uh, have uh, have encouraged us to add a second weekly podcast. Right now we're dropping one a week on Sundays, and we appreciate everybody checking us out as they do. And we're going to add a second one. Uh, really? Yeah. And so we're excited about that. It's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to be uh, – a lot of uh, what we're going to do in that second podcast is try to answer a lot of questions that are coming in, a lot of biblical questions, a lot of well, a lot of all kinds of questions. So, so it's like when I was a kid, you know, the first gun I shot was a single barrel, four ten. But you know, it was a lot of pressure because you only have one shot. <laughs> and uh, so then I was introduced to a double barrel, Ooh. and I was like, back up. I got a backup plan now. <laughs> and so eventually, you know, I went to the semi-automatic, and uh, I became quite the provider. So then it's boom, so, boom, boom. Yeah, that's what Phil says. The greatest gun is one that goes boom, boom, boom. So I guess we're at this boom. Without hanging up. <laughs> we're, without hanging up, yeah. We're so, at the boom, boom. Stage. So I guess if people keep so, watching, that's right. We may wind up boom, boom, well, boom. You know. never know. You um, never know. You know. We'll see about that. We'll see. But I'm just saying a double barrel is, you know. It's better than a single barrel. Would you agree with I that? I never though? actually thought about uh, speaking to the numbers of people we are now speaking to. I never thought about that on how that would work. But it is what it is. What can I say? Did you think we were just talking amongst ourselves? You know, I thought, you know, somebody said, man, you know, started talking about hundreds of thousands. And I'm like, do what? <laughs> yeah. So I'm thinking. Well, They're interested they, in what you have to say. Well, spiritual matters. I keep waiting on somebody to come up with a better story, but so far, not even close. I've heard well, all sure the stories out there. Getting off the planet alive. That's exactly right. I mean, you'd think people would say, hmm. So check out our two podcasts now per week. Uh, it's going to be great. Don't want to miss it. I think they're going to – second one's going to drop on Wednesday, so be looking for that. And uh, more to love if you love it. Tell others about it. I am unashamed. What about you? Well, look, I went out there. You know, it's hard to – step out there before something happens especially in college football because everybody goes crazy I mean, it's a social media phenomenon over their teams but i really based on what had happened this year i felt like lsu had a better chance than not to go into alabama despite they hadn't lost there in years and whoop them and guess they, what they won 35 in a row at home, going back to Ole Miss in like 2013 or something. Or it was like 31, 31, something like that. 35. Yeah, but, but it was back several years. I mean, they hadn't lost at home in 49 years. out of 50 or 48 right. out of 49. We're talking about years. My um, my prediction, what happened in my prediction? And mine. And yours. You I, went along. You I backed me up. I, was, I backed you up. In so, fact, I was getting text that day uh, about the game. Because everybody gets nervous, you know, all our friends. And I got a couple that were actually at the game. And so they were sending me pictures, you know, and they're like, oh, I'm so nervous. And I was like, you know, I'm, and normally I'm that way if I think we're going to lose. But I was like, I've been cool as a cucumber for two weeks. You know, it was a two-week lead up to the game. I mean, I was like you. I just felt very confident that LSU was going to be better. I mean, anything's possible. And it's hard to win on the road. It's hard to win at Alabama. But I just felt confident, didn't you? I yeah, just thought I we were going to win the game. But, you know, well, after – What uh, we... intrigued me, uh, and, and I knew there was – there was they were going to be a bone to be chewed, is that the score ended up 44-41. I think it's 46. 46. 46. 46-41. And if you noticed – LSU got ahead, and Alabama would respond, but but Alabama never got ahead of them. Not no, once. they, they right. trailed the whole game. They trailed the whole yeah. game, and that's what – when I kept seeing that pattern, I said it seems to be that no matter what Bama does in order to catch up, they just fall a little short, 
and they never over overrun them and outscore them. Yeah. Well, it, here was it, why it, you were words, thinking that. Burrow and the boys just kept it right out of reach, right out of reach. Yeah. Now they cut it thin a few places, well, the defense but, but they never but you fell think about underneath it. Right. staying ahead. Think about this. That was worthy of note. There yeah. were three touchdowns that one of them was our our fault. You do not punt the ball to the number one punt returner in the nation ever. So <laughs> you should never. Touch you you look down as a cut. I'm blaming the coaches, oh, yeah. or you know, the punter maybe said it went off the side of my foot, which means I punted it right down the middle. Cause you know, this is one time you do not. I would have taken him by the helmet before the game and said, <laughs> "Look, you do not punt to that man. He's number one for a reason." <laughs> So that okay, that had nothing to do with outside of the punter, with the rest of the team. That was just dumb. So he gave them <laughs> seven points there. So take that off. Well, now it's forty six to thirty four, right? Right. We also gave up a touchdown that these Alabama coaches noticed that when they changed the play at the line of scrimmage, LSU's defense. They all turned their head and looked to the sideline, and they changed the play. So Alabama, in the two weeks prepping this, said, look, when they do that, act like you're going to clap and change the play. So when they looked at the sideline, they said, Hut, and here's a guy who runs a 4-2-40. took off. Devonta Smith takes off down the sideline. Whoop, duck, touchdown. Well, they look over like 24. They're like, how come you let the guy behind you? He's looking at the sideline getting the play. So now, and that took a half a that second. Was, but that, that was that was like flag foot. That was a me and Willie. Common sense would say if there's a minute thirty six left. No, no, you're, no, no. You're you're not that. Yet. I'm not talking about that one. This <laughs> happened early in the game. They threw a long bomb on a. This is something me and Willie would do in flag That's football, right. recreational ball. It would be <laughs> like act like we're gonna call a play. And then we don't – we just, you know, take off while take they're off. trying to That's make That's exactly adjust. what happened. So now we're down to take those seven points off. So where are we at now? 27? 27. Now it's 46, 46 to 27. 27. Those two plays should have never happened. One was a was just an idiotic just brain fart from the punter. <laughs> the other was a trick play it, to the it, equivalent it, of like stealing somebody's signals. Right. You know, looking at his mouth. And hats off play. to him for doing it. Hey, I mean, they did it. They it's it Alabama typical, you know, just oh, kind of shady <laughs> move by look the coach and stuff. Okay, time fans. Well, we <laughs> can't win on the field. We're getting our butts whooped. So let's try some kind of Jay we're seems act to be like a very play. partisan individual. Yeah. Oh, I am. He's reliving. Well, and I, then, cut, and I then, cut my arm the other day and it bled purple and gold. <laughs> <laughs> so, I love Alabama. I do events there all the time. But when it comes to football, you can't be – you're either an LSU fan or you're not. They <laughs> don't like me when we're playing, and I don't like them. But now, outside of that, we're all lo- fun. we love each other. You know? And they cheered for Trump, Alabama and LSU fans, yeah, was which was nice. Yeah, That was, that that was, was awesome good. because so he's now, been getting booed everywhere. Now right, I'm getting do the to last the one. third okay. touchdown was the play you're talking about. Now, um, I don't know what the heck's going on. A minute what, 20. That we think we won the game, and I don't like prevent defenses and all. Make sure they catch Look, the ball in front of you. Exactly. And I'll say this with all enthusiasm: I do not like the prevent defense, unless you're two touchdowns up with a minute left. Then what? Then, what then the preven- heck? What, prevent's what, fine. What, what are we doing here? <laughs> There's one thing that can't happen, which is what happened. So that's just a brain cramp. So you take that off, and now where are we down to? We're down to 19. you got to remember, it it wasn't wasn't in 19. It's not impossible to crowd the receiver on the line of scrimmage. It's it's not impossible that you can keep him in front of you, and you know, and and and, and swat down whatever comes your way. It's not impossible to do it. No, but if you're going to try it, it just looked like to me a minute 20, 20 left. Just give the man some room. Make sure you keep him in front well, of you. It'll be easier. A, well, there's not even a there, safety back there. Here, here's right. my point, though. Everybody's talking about the game. They're dissecting the game. You just take those three plays out. Three plays that average 80 yards a play. You just take those three fluky, freaky plays that hardly should never happen. And not only do we dominate the game in yardage, because now that's – 240 yards you cut them in half. so we're almost 600 yards there at 250 and the point the game is 46 to 20 
Yeah. I mean, that that's what happened during, during the – they had a couple good drives, you know, and you say, well, those plays happened. I was impressed but they were with fluky. Alabama that they could make those type plays. Pretty well, I said that, how many fluky plays do we have? Well, none, except except none. except that if Alabama, if if we had one of our Royal Tide fans on here, they would say if Tua hadn't uh, dropped that ball, you know, that was a score they got that then we turned That's around right. scored on. And I'll if, give you that one. If they had if they had just run the ball there with the twenty seconds left in the first half, which they should have, instead of throwing a pick, that we then got a touchdown. So a couple of our scores were on mistakes That's they made. Yeah. That's true. I'll take fair. two touchdowns if you right. took them away you're you're There's still a couple of scores 38 to 20 i don't think there's any, about what happened. any doubt at lsu 30 looked really good dominating the game but yeah like, to your point dad i mean i think everybody said that everybody respected to a i mean he was obviously hurt and yet he played amazing you know what i mean but he wasn't as quite like he normally is but you couldn't hardly tell i, I mean, mean it was kind of weird he limped a little but then after they lost it looked like he needed oh. that to be air vacked out and you get a <laughs> sometimes you know, you know you know a little discretion on his part you know you know if, basically if I hadn't been hurt here well we're, which we're may have been, strapped you boys I did notice one play on about the seven or eight yard line where when he threw it Rashard Lawrence tipped the ball he should have he he should have just ran oh he, he had have walked I right. saw it and I thought. Well, maybe he is hurt more he, than you because he didn't even like consider it you to know? try that. Yeah. And so, look, am I saying that it didn't help us? Oh, it helped us that he was not a hundred. I don't think he was a hundred percent. He wasn't. Know? There's no doubt about that. And yet, but he still was tough. I, I'll say this: our best player arguably has number seven for that reason. He did not play as good as he right. normally does. I will does say either. this about it: even if Alabama had won, you know, you know, and then pulled it off, you know. The onside kick, they could have gotten it back, and then you know, put in the way they were scoring, you know, one or oh, two yeah. plays, and there. I'm not I would sure say why. even yeah. if Alabama had won it, it was a great football game. It was, oh, it was awesome. awesome. I'm not sure why they don't have Jamar Chase. Look, I love Justin Jefferson; he has great hands. But I would rather, since you have the possibility of getting your your clock cleaned on now, an onside it, kick, put yeah. your bigger receiver because yeah. Jamar Chase can catch just as good. Yeah. So we talk a lot on our podcast um, about protection for our children. For you know, they're not mature enough to handle the cell phone age without right. some kind of restrictions. Right. And Jace is kind of our resident expert because I have a teenager. He has teenager. Dad, you and I. I, are I little... certainly agree with that. Yeah. So yeah. we we you know there's all sorts of stuff out there. Jace has talked a lot about it. Snapchat, Instagram. You know, even YouTube, which we're on, obviously there's some good things out there. TikTok. But a lot of bad stuff. Yeah. You know, so we got to find a way to protect our kids, uh, what they're watching, what they're looking at. So we've got some some good friends at Circle uh, that have come up with an app that is able to filter and protect what your kids are watching. Yeah. All your devices, everything Or the you have. apps that they're downloading. Right, Because exactly. what they can do is you can say, don't do that. So they'll delete the app. Well, then as soon as they walk out, they download the app again right. before they walk in. Delete. So you need something to you have to manage that. that. And, and, and Jace has actually dove into it, so he he gets it. Uh, and and this is really going to help that. So right now, our listeners get thirty dollars off uh, from Circle Home Plus when you visit meetcircle.com slash unashamed, and then when you check out, you enter unashamed. So it's twice on the unashamed. You get $30 off meetcircle.com slash unashamed. Enter unashamed to check out, save some money, but more importantly, protect your kids today. Now the challenge is, Al, and it's always that mystery, is if you could pull that off, go into the Crimson Tide ter territory and beat them, legitimately beat them, legitimately. If that's the case, if you now don't win out, that that would be the sad thing. It'd be all for naught. So, well, by this, the time this airs, they so will I have already played prepared. Ole Miss. This, so the hopefully. hardest I laugh. Of course, look after the game. I was physically and emotionally exhausted. Yeah. I had wrecked furniture. <laughs> I had hollered yeah. outside. The Jason neighbors may, had you called. You may remember, not don't get so deep into ball games. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> I'll, I'll well, I said it. about you because I had to do a wedding, which is a whole other story. So I missed. I had to tape the second half and go home and watch it. But I said, I said when we were leaving to go to the wedding, 
is right at the end of the half when they got that interception. I said, Jace just jumped off the couch. Like when they scored that touchdown oh, with six wow. seconds left, I said, Jace just went berserk. I ran. No, I did worse than that. I opened the door <laughs> and I took off running down the driveway hollering. <laughs> I just, yeah. yeah. I have not reached that particular <laughs> level in my ball game watching. Maybe when you get my know. age, you're like, okay. I mean, you know, may the best man win. But I don't get choose sides, hate people over a football game. I just no, don't, I don't do hate it. him. I love everybody. No. I've already <laughs> clarified that. But I just think when you go to Alabama, and he used to be our coach, there's a Nobody lot really was giving us a chance. You know, this this uh Colin, My word uh, was what's his name? Colin Colin Cowherd. Cowherd, look, he said, Let me this is before the game. This is why I wanted to talk about my prediction. He said, <laughs> This is not gonna be a game. He's like, This is not a rival rivalry. He said, Alabama is the hammer and LSU is the nail. <laughs> well now And you're getting hot now. Well, yeah, I'm like, okay, buddy. I think because I'm like, what have you been watching? I think we got to leg- for said, whatever it's worth. So, do you worth, think on his show the next day that he go love back? To know. Al- ma- ma- I wish some of our listeners would go look and see what happened there. Somebody I tell found no out what Cowherd said about and, this. Guy. And uh, the the African American guy who talked is the NBA guy who's who's kind of annoying. He hollers. Oh, uh, uh, Stephen A. Smith. Oh, he said Alabama, you know, will just run over them. Same kind of deal. I loved – I want to hear his <laughs> retraction because I heard that also, and I thought, these guys are not – they're being too – you know, LSU's good this year. Yeah. What have you been watching? I knew it wasn't going to be just they're going to hammer and nail. That was a bunch of crap. <laughs> so I guess mother, I heard that and all the mother, was, When your mother said, uh, Dad, what do you think about the game? That's right before they came on. I said, I will be shocked if LSU beats them. That was my, that yeah. was my f- sincere feeling going in. I will be shocked. Well, you bought into this narrative of that they're still dominating. I'm just looking at this season. I didn't buy into any narrative. I just, <laughs> I just went with the record. Well, if you that these guys shocked. have established, I know. And I've looked at LSU over the last what? Well, how long has That's it been right. since we beat Alabama? <laughs> but this year's. Different. I would just say, and I'll be shocked if they beat them. Well, I will say that I had a little more respect for you. Now I know why you don't why you take your hearing aids out because when I, mom was at my house for part of the game, did she go nuts? Well, she did, and that's fine. I love the that, but she asked so many questions during the. Why did they do that? Too why? much talking. I was like, quit asking. Yeah, that's like, why. That's, if it's a big game, I have to watch it alone. Or was, just then she called life. Jace. She calls Jace right at the end of the half, oh, and Jace did. says, "Don't talk to me. There's, there's still time left in the, the call me at half." And then we score. <laughs> I know. That's I what I said. I said, "You're breaking a rule." And she said, "What rule?" I said, "You do not call me." <laughs> While the game is going on, I thought that there may be a medical emergency. Is the only reason I answered this phone. I saw you. I was like, when you I get seventy William years old uh, and your mom calls, okay, there may be a medical emergency. So, so I said, hey, because I thought she got so excited of that touchdown. We have now, yeah, you know, she had a heart attack, or, <laughs> and she's like, what did you think about that? I'm like, there's still seventeen <laughs> seconds to Don't go. Don't call me until I, I think to. William Shakespeare had it pretty close to right. A situation becomes a crisis when cattle or women stampede. <laughs> That's kind of what you saw what with you, your you mother, because your mother was like, ah! she was screaming up, like, calm down. So is that where you got your uh, illustration about saying women and dogs have quirks? You made that because William Shakespeare He's going compared cattle. Years. I just do it to get the chick started. Women. Well, that'll work. Oh yeah, that'll do it. That'll work. Uh, so it's so, a joke. Well, you know, I didn't realize that. Until we talked about on our podcast, Jay, is that, you know, the Bible talks about balding. Yeah, it does. There was uh, there was a bunch of young youths, I believe it's Second Kings 2, who were making fun of a man of God, which you find out in that story. That's a bad thing to do. We call that because a DED. Of his appearance. Because, well, of, because saying, he was bald. Yeah, they were saying, hey, baldy, you know, eight ball in the corner pocket. They, they didn't say that, but it was it was every <laughs> bald, bald joke you can think of, which led him to, you know, turning that situation over to the Lord, the gang of thugs. And two female bears came <laughs> rushing out and mauled 42 
members of the gang because they were making fun of Don't bald mess people. with a man's head, his hair. <laughs> well, right. Or lack I mean, thereof. You know, so, 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 you know, we discovered that text, and we're like, man, this is pretty powerful. Well, we're thankfully, we got our folks, our friends over at Keeps, and the reason they name it Keeps is they want you to keep your hair. They want to keep you from being and other people from being mauled by bears. Now we know. Or being ridiculed or by being young, ridiculed. young thugs. Not that we would ridicule anyone, of course, that doesn't I'm have hair. I'm going to have to confess, I've made fun of that because I'm a hairy person, and I shouldn't have. So right. I'm, I'm repenting of that right now. There you go. You know? So so the good folks at Keeps have got a repentance out of Jace. I'd say that's pretty good. Uh, yeah. We want you to be able to check them out because we don't want to lose hair. We want to protect yeah. ourselves. You get a free online doctor consult. You get 50% off your first order. So go to keeps.com slash door, D-O-O-R, keeps.com slash door, and find out what you can do to grow your hair and not be made fun of by teenagers. That brings up, uh, I'll just put a final point on that. It just occurred to me, I haven't been to a barber shop in 40 years. Really? Well, let me just be the first to tell you. Haven't been to a barber shop. It's time to go. (laughs) Nothing major. It's a new world that I'm fixing to get into. <laughs> yeah. Keeps.com slash door. <laughs> so you guys are, tell me a little bit about your, you're heading up to Kansas from here as soon as we wrap today. We are literally leaving, and I got a text from, we're, we're hunting with my old buddy, Barrett. We may not be in Kansas. We may be in Missouri. We're, we're going yeah. to the Midwest. I, I never never what, identify what? exactly where you're well, going. Well, that's right. Yeah, so uh, what, what would the temps be, Jace, on this little duck hunt this week? We that's, don't want to talk about that. <laughs> I, I tell you this. I've hunted it's cold here right in now. that area for the last 15, 20 years, many trips, and I've always been cold. Yeah. I don't – because in, in, when you're in Louisiana, you just don't have the gear nor the – the history of uh, you know, because I look at I look at Barrett, and he's running, ripping. Now he's cold too, but they just they they're used to it. That Great but, Plains but crowd, they're, they're, you, they're it, it's cold up there. Oh, it's cold. So it'll be, I think it's eight right now. Eight, eight, eight degrees. So I told him I was like, look, just find me something to burn. But he sent me a a text while ago. Because he said the oxbow is open. He he was going deer hunting. And he walks by this little oxbow lake on his property. And he said hundreds of mallards got up. And so that that's what led to this trip. I was like, well, what, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm waiting on y'all to get here. So now we're leaving. <laughs> but so he saw that. Well, today he went and scouted because we're going to hunt tomorrow. Because I said, well, it's going to be froze up if it's eight degrees. And he said, well, maybe they'll keep it open because there's so many ducks. I said, it's too cold. It'll be frozen. Well, he just walked by there, but he eased up there this time. And he said, I saw 10 green heads visual and backed out. So they kept it up. That's, you know, so he, just, he saw and then he just slithered out. You, you know what's amazing about this hole? It's a, they dug it out you know, 50 years ago to make a lake somewhere else, a pond, a levee or something before he ever got it. But it's basically a big oxbow bar pit in the middle of the woods. And so we'll be hunting. We'll be shooting down like 20 yards. Hmm. And those ducks pretty are steep, just a steep bank. Yeah, I've seen this thing. I've never seen a duck on it before. And he's like, I don't know why they're here, but they are. Yep. So, so now this is so – so uh, just to let the audience know, you know, your your pal is uh, – I mean, he he's like us. He's hardcore – and when y'all have hunted in the past up there, you've had to take chainsaws oh. to cut out ice holes. Yeah, and so how how deep was the best the- hunt? Like if it's froze up tomorrow, I mean tomorrow's our our worst day because it's going to be obviously eight degrees. So, but you just you hunt all day because they have so many more mallards up there because you're further toward Canada. Right. That if you can get an ice hole anywhere out there and put some decoys out. When it's that cold, you have a good chance of killing them at some point during the day. No, Phil yep. knows. Sometimes it's like the warmest part of the day. It may be two or three o'clock. So when you go hunting up there, we'll hunt all day. Yeah, we, we wait. So for you to cut come. the hole, and then you have to get the ice underneath the other ice Just to get slide it. Slide the sheets underneath, underneath the other. The yeah, other my sheets. buddy is a professional ice hole maker, <laughs> which is look that sounds crazy, 
but it's hard to do because you don't want to break it up in chips because they glare so much off the sun. The mallards are flying from the Canadian prairies, and they and they've arrived about mid continent. We are flying from one end of the continent, the ducks are flying from the other end of the continent, Mm -hmm. and we're hopefully meeting in the middle. Oh, that's what we're doing. (laughs) Because the the migration has happened. We're flying north to meet them. They're flying south, coming this way, and but they but they're just now moved about mid continent. Well, that's where Jace's buddy is, mid continent. But you so realize you last night it got twenty seven degrees here in Louisiana. It's never got that cold. This I noticed they all never. got excited back when the the temperatures were breaking heat records. But when this happened, I've heard no one say, you know, it's never been this cold before in November. Uh, I wonder if global warming maybe has modified a little. <laughs> Because we really were touting the fact that yeah. we're all going to burn up in August. <laughs> yeah. Well, now we it's now November, we're freeze to death. and I keep going back and saying, uh, trust that tilt, that 20, 23.5 degree tilt. <laughs> it gives you fall and winter, irregardless of winter, what cows, how much winter. gas cows are. We're passing. back on this. We're Look, back on. you know what it's going to be tonight here in Louisiana. It's, I mean, it's the first week of November. Twenty degrees. 20, Seventeen. Oh. 17 record, record I've never seen I mean, it I'm going to have to leave the water I think. dripping. I don't believe I've ever seen 17 in mid-November. Not in November. No. I've never seen it in November or December. It'd have to be. Which is why we're – usually I make a trip to the Midwest and hunt usually during our split. But since this front – and last night, I heard – did you hear the front come through? I mean, that wind was uh, – Yeah, I heard it, it come through. Howling. I mean, it was – I remember in the old days when that used to happen during duck season – we Good sign. would maul them Good sign. in the middle of the night. So, Dad, can you tell me, or Jace, where your the information is your legal title to your home? I would ask the hoarder about that. The hoarder happens to be your mother. <laughs> She's the one that, that would know where particular things are stored. A hoarder can always find, if you tell them, including what what was this legal legal uh, for the, your home? Your legal title. Miss Cable, the Miss Cable could come up with it. She's a hoarder. She knows where everything is. It's a gigantic <laughs> pile of of stuff, but she knows where it would be. So I refer I, you to her. I don't. I, I, you know, it's a good question. I have no idea where my. Well, title. here's what here's what most people don't know. Miss Cable, no. Most of the time, you don't have. You have whatever you signed when you originally made the loan, but the actual legal title. Guess what? It's in out there in cyberspace. These things are kept on the internet. Really? So here's the problem: thieves they hack into your name, so they get your title. They refile the deed so it looks like that they have the your home and then they sell it. This is actually happening. <laughs> so and you're touting the the social media world. The, well, the, social media is a whole different world, but I'm saying that's no. what's happening. So this is cyberspace. This is cyberspace. Yeah. So and this is supposed to be a good thing. Well, it's well, not a good thing when they steal it. So we got a no, company here. It'd be like somebody pulling up to your house and say, "I just bought your house." In cyberspace. That's right. And you're like, well, I didn't know I was putting it up for sale. They were like, oh, yeah. Now some Russian owns your house. This is happening. This is not made up. So Home Title Lock, that's our company. They're going to put a firewall up around your title and mortgage. Um, So this is going to protect you. Uh, You got 60 days uh, of risk-free trial for Home Title Lock. So if you're worried about your mortgage, it's not a lot of money to be able to protect that. You go to HomeTitleLock.com and you enter your address to see if you're already a victim. First, they're going to let you know that, and that's how you're going to defend yourself. So check out these guys. you got 60 free days. Uh, Dad doesn't do a lot of computer. but This is know. like an invisible force field. Like You've seen Star Trek, and you they, they shoot the rockets, but you have an invisible force field over your house. That's right. Be the same thing. I don't deal in matters such as these. <laughs> That's why we're trying to help you out. I'm with you. So we're going to help defend your home, Dad, and the hoarder, Mom, with HomeTitleLock.com. HomeTitleLock.com. Check them out. See if it's uh, something you're interested in. 
So what does the Almighty have to say about this situation there? Well, we, uh, we're talking about uh, kings and the kingdom. This it's, is my favorite subject that we're going to talk about. I know. About. I'm excited about it because you guys are two of the best I've ever heard at, at explaining what the kingdom of God is. And so in our, in our storyline in terms of Israel, we talked about that they had just gotten their first king, which God said was a rejection of him, which was interesting. Um, by wanting an earthly king because the Israelites said they wanted to be like the nations around them and they want to have somebody to send out and do battle for them. Uh, mm-hmm. God said, if you just trust me, I'll win your battles for you. But, so can we read the Daniel account? Or yeah, I want, that's wanna, where I want to start. You, I want to start in Daniel 2 because... I mean, you tell about the historical aspect of Daniel just so everybody will know where we're at So we read this. Yeah, so... 600 so, years... Uh, before Jesus is when Daniel was under captivity by, by the Babylonian Empire. I took, uh, I, I'm not a computer person, but I, but I do have encyclopedias. I took the encyclopedias, the complete set. By the way, they and, have encyclopedias on the Internet. I know it. I just go to the source to begin with. <laughs> so I'm reading uh, in the encyclopedia that the Babylonian Empire was 606 606 years before Jesus came in 2019 years ago, year mm-hmm. one. So after the Babylonian Empire came the Medo-Persian Empire. Mm-hmm. They came, they fell, and then the Greeks and Alexander the Great came along. They whipped the Medes and the Persian and were moving toward when Jesus showed up. Mm-hmm. And then that fourth kingdom that Daniel mentions was a kingdom of iron partly mixed with brittle with clay, and, well, we're going to read it, but so, that's the Roman. And that's the Roman Empire. So, Roman so Empire. when Daniel said— I just went with the encyclopedia and the dating. When Daniel and it, and it said all this, Daniel. He was, he, this was predictive. All these kingdoms that Dad just mentioned had not happened yet. They're, and by the way, how kingdoms. did Daniel know all this 3,000 years it's amazing. before or however many thousand years? I'm, I Don't quote me on that, but hundreds of years before. How right. does he know? I mean, the history in this is incredible. And, is. and he points to it, so— so Can it, I read it? Yeah, hang on. So Israel has split at this point. There's been a lot of kings. We, we're talking about the first king, but there's been a lot of kings. They finally got down. We talked about the 12 tribes. There was only two left. I mean, they have been wiped out. And so finally, the last little bit of Israel gets taken into captivity. And so they're in the, the kingdom of Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar is the king. And when Daniel makes this prediction, that's kind of what's going on. And there's the other yep. predictions elsewhere. And and you got to remember, this this all happened. When you think of king, I mean, because they still have modern day kings, right, in some countries. Oh, yeah. Uh, sure. I'm trying to name a few. But the point is, God set this up so that we would eventually have the king of kings. Yep. Right. Which is an awesome thought. A little semblance of one in Britain, of course, but then All you right. have, yeah, then, you have the, the, you, then you have the like Saudi Arabia. It's a it's a king type deal. In the princes, monarchy. right? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I mean, the danger of that is if you're having a person that's flawed. He could, you know, you just think about all the bad kings throughout history. Yeah, there's a lot of different kinds of earthly kingdoms. In this case, it was a monarchy where you have the the Mm -hmm. king. And no matter what, they rise and fall. They rise and fall. That's why I said the king of kings, he he rose and without the possibility of falling. That's why. But this prediction in Daniel 2.44, he says, In the time of those kings, Daniel 2.44, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed. So you can well, before imagine. Before you get to there, Jace, just make sure back in verse 39, he's telling Nebuchadnezzar what he saw in a dream. He said, after you, which the Babylonian ruled the world, another kingdom arise. Well, you look in the encyclopedias, that was the Greek, em- I mean, the uh, Medo-Persian Empire. Mm-hmm. Inferior to your next, a third kingdom. Well, you just go through history and look who came after the Medo-Persian, Alexander the Great and the Greeks. Then finally, there'll be a fourth kingdom. Well, you just look at who who took the Greeks out. Well, the Romans did. So you know well, I'm from history. There. Yeah. Well, I'm so getting there, from, but from there, I, I'm just making the point that all of humanity, and and as a person that read this Bible, when I read this, I, I, I perked up here. Because you have a prediction that 
in a certain time in history. That's right. You, you ever forget whether you're a believer or not. You have a a prediction here that the God of heaven is going to set up a kingdom on earth that will never be destroyed, nor will it be left to another people. Well, as a human being, you need to figure out if that is true or possible, you need to look into that. That's right. You would want to be a part of a kingdom that could never be destroyed, nor could it be taken over by another people. It's very critical because if you just turn over from Daniel and talked about that fourth kingdom of iron, and 600 years in the making, you got Babylonia, Medo-Persian, Greeks, and Romans. Well, all you have to do is you say, well, well, who was ruling the world when Jesus was born? Watch. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. That that clar- clarifies and makes sure everyone understands that when Jesus showed up, the earthly kingdom that was ruling the world was in fact the Roman Empire. That's Luke chapter 2, but Phil, verse 1 and 2. You're right. getting ahead of them. So maybe I should stop. Well, let, let me just read Just go this. on with let, what let, you got there. <laughs> well, then it says, Daniel 2, 4, 2, it will crush it, this kingdom brought up by from heaven by yep. God. It yep. will crush all those kingdoms and bring them to an end, but it will in sell, itself endure forever now he said this is the meaning of the vision of the rock cut out of a mountain so he'd had a vision back where you said in verse 39 and the vision was basically this after you another kingdom will rise inferior to yours next a third kingdom one of bronze will rule over the whole earth finally there will be a fourth kingdom as strong as iron so he has this vision he gets down when he his explanation to the vision is that there is a kingdom coming from heaven that will crush all other kingdoms. It will in itself endure and a, and, forever. And a key point, if you keep reading in the second part of verse uh, 44 in Daniel 45, the great God has shown because everybody says, well, when is it? Nebuchadnezzar mm-hmm. sitting there saying, you got to be kidding. You mean I'm gone. I'm, 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 I'm falling and I'm going to be overrun by the Medo-Persian Empire? Yeah. So watch. The great God has shown the king what will take place in the future. So when Daniel saw this dream, if if Nebuchadnezzar was saying, when, when is this going to happen? He said, it's going to take place in the future. Mm-hmm. Well, fast forward 600 years, you say, who ruled the world? The Romans. That's when Jesus was born. So there you go. Well, you did the the historical look, which I did myself. We didn't do it together because I tried to figure out this prophecy too. So you look in history via encyclopedias, yep. and you start seeing these these kingdoms Clear that you, as a picture. you named. And yeah, it's evident that Daniel had it right. Now, in his, his prophetic uh, vision, he had all these other kingdoms right because history – supported what he said that is correct which is if you want some evidence i mean i know this following jesus is based on faith but it's pretty remarkable that he had all that right what are you talking about and it is interesting al that when when 600 years after daniel interpreted that dream for nebuchadnezzar about these earthly empires rising and falling right and falling in these days when when jesus showed up there was someone else that showed up John the Baptist, and he came preaching in the desert of Judea. So what was he saying? Watch. Repent. Remember what Daniel said? For the kingdom of heaven is near. You say, who's ruling? The fourth empire is what Daniel said. You're like, "Uh uh-oh. Romans. And where is it? You say, near, at hand. Well, the only difference now is 2,000 years later, we're saying everybody needs to repent because the kingdom is here. It well, was, and it that's was near right here. That's mm-hmm. where a lot of our listeners are probably going to say, "Do what?" That's because right. inside religion, there are different views about when that kingdom came, or in some cases, when it's coming. Some people believe a, a vast, a big number in the religious world, and I'm just saying this. You know, you you can share. You know, listen to what we think about it, but. 
the two different or three different camps, I guess, is that people believe they're still waiting on the kingdom. I know it. So when you said the kingdom is here, a lot of people are like, the kingdom is here. So we would like to. It was near 2,000 years ago. Well, I did meet a fellow. We were talking about this. The, the same fellow we're hunting with. <laughs> if and something said, is near, you don't figure you're well, going to wait 2,000 years later or longer well, for it to get here. You're saying that because Jesus and John the Baptist was here roughly 2,000 years ago. This is how many how many years later after Daniel said that? 600. 600. So 600 after that, John the Baptist said it's near. And then Jesus, you were in Matthew 3, 1. In Matthew 4, I think it's 17. 4, 17. uh, Jesus began to preach, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. Now, this fella that I'm talking with this about, he's still waiting on the kingdom to get here. I said, well, how come? Well, that would make this seem wrong because Jesus said it was near then. So it had to have come back then sometime. And he's like, well, no, that doesn't mean what it says, which you always got to be careful when you say that. Because he said, well, with the Lord, a year, you know, a day is like a, a thousand, thousand years. years. And I was like, well, you're taking a, a concept about God, which is true. God is not, he doesn't have a watch, nor will he ever have one. And you're applying it to something where Jesus said it was near. Any human being that, that reads that, near is, means near. Well, while, well, he wouldn't have said well it. while you're there, how come Jesus said in Mark 9, 1, I tell you the truth. Great verse. Some who are standing here, now we're in the first 30 years of Jesus. There was a life. group of guys standing right that, beside him. Some standing here will not taste death. You're not going to die before they see the kingdom of God come with power. Before they see well, it. Well, that narrows it down that it came in their lifetime. That's a good verse. Because if you believe this is inspired by God, and you read that verse, that's Mark 9, 1, you would have to conclude that whatever this kingdom they're referring to, it had to come before they died. That is correct. Unless you... Now, I read this verse to the <clears throat> same fellow I'm telling you. Now, he didn't really have a good answer for that. Well, it... it, it <laughs> <laughs> Cause I that was like, too Are simple they to miss. dead? And he said, well, maybe... Maybe they came back from the dead, you know, but, but that, that, well, and to add a little bit more, um, buttress to the argument you guys are making a hundred and twenty to 150 years before Daniel. Mm -hmm. So now we're going back to 700 BC, two guys named one of them named Zachariah, who was a prophet. Here's what he said about looking forward. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Here is the man whose name is the branch, capital B. He will branch out from this place yep. and build the temple of the Lord. Yep. It is he who will build the temple of the Lord, and he will be clothed with majesty, king, and will sit and rule on his throne, and he will be a priest on his throne. Which, by the way, that was persona non grata in Israel. You couldn't be a priest and a king. There would be one coming that would be both, and there will be harmony between the two. Zechariah, again, which is, which is why Jesus, I yeah. mean, uh, the Gospels, two of them start off with the genealogy of Jesus. Because right. you're always oh, just as a kid, I'd wonder, why, why is this in here? Because it was showing the concept that human lineage. God, yeah, God is human in Jesus, and he's going to be the bridge via being a king and a priest. You right. know, when you think priests, we generally think some guy with a black suit on with a white right collar, but and the actual priest is just a go between God and and man. Well, Jesus is the ultimate because he represents both. Right. Yep. And Hebrews ten tells now, us he's the high priest. So one other thing oh, I'll add, then I'll let okay. you guys go back. Isaiah is another one that was the contemporary of Zechariah, and he predicted a virgin birth for the king in Isaiah seven fourteen when he said the Lord Himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and he will be called Emmanuel. Because to have God a kingdom, if you have a kingdom, that means you got to have a king. <clears throat> exactly. So Jesus qualifies to be the king of kings because of what he just named. If you can come out of the birth canal of a woman without that woman ever having any kind of sex, you may qualify for being king of kings. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, there's a couple of texts here. Uh, Peter's talking. He said, you, this is uh, 1 Peter 2, verse 9. You are a chosen people. Love it. A royal priesthood. Now, representatives what, of heaven. Yeah. It would be one of the most difficult things there is on planet Earth if you, being a member of the kingdom of God and a priest of the Most High, and your king is also high priest, and you're a priest working underneath him, it'd be difficult if someone passed me up on the road, saw me walking down the road, it'd be hard for them to say out when they saw me, there goes a priest in the kingdom of God. That's true. They just wouldn't think that's who I was. But where's the verse? Well, they didn't says, think Jesus was the King of King, Lord of Lords, right. when he when he appeared before the the big dog. The, the, the big dog said, "Are you a king?" He said, you, you, "What you've said is true." But Our you remember man. when David, who became king, was chosen? You remember that little nugget where it said, "God does not." Because they looked at him and said, this little small fella, he's the youngest one. Right. And it says, God does not base judgment on the external appearance of a man. God looks at the heart, right. which qualifies you, for Jesus, for John the Baptist, for David. How could you be David, a king, Al, you? if you've been strung up like an animal on a tree and spiked to a tree? You say, and that's going to be your king? You said, that's him. Well, you're right. and It's, it's a really interesting point because Pilate, who you're talking about in John 18, he saw himself as the Roman authority over this region. And yep. he asked him that question. He did. He said, are you the king of the Jews? That was his question. Yeah, yeah. But and are then, you a king? And then Jesus said, is that your own idea? Or did others talk to you about it? In other words, are you really wondering about a king? And he, then Pilate said, am I a Jew? Your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. What is it you've done? Here's what Jesus said. My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. He said, you've missed the whole point. While, while you're there, if you read that, how come Jesus said, my, my kingdom, he's the king, he's on the earth. Right. There's nothing about way in the future when, how could your kingdom, read that text again, that last part. He said, he said, my kingdom, my kingdom is, is not of this world. How could that be if the kingdom wasn't there and the king wasn't there doing the talking? That's a great point. And he says, my kingdom well, is from another place. Yeah. And then Pilate said, oh, you are a king then. Jesus said, you say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Well, then he says, what, what is, is truth? truth? And you know where he missed it? Is he missed it in the question. He should have said, who is truth? That's why when G John said, John 14, he said, I am the truth. I am the way. Because even today, religious groups say, we're trying to find out the Lord's way, the way to righteousness. Well, he said, I am the way. Yeah, and me. people miss, miss that. With it. Well, Pilate missed it about truth. He was thinking, give me some truth that will help me Understand you're a king because he couldn't do what Phil is saying. He couldn't look at this guy and say, well, you're the king. You're the truth. Well, you can't be the truth because you're a human. Because he felt like he had and, power over him. He oh, was like, yeah. He's I, like, I can, can decide you. whether you live or die. Oh, yeah, right. I can That's kill you. you have no, you're not a king. That's why he never saw it. That's why he didn't ask the question, who is truth, because he missed it. I want to get to... Matthew 16, because you said, what has this got to do with the prediction and the religious world that, that a lot of people miss this? When you think about heaven or the kingdom, or when you think about kingdom, most people think the kingdom of heaven. And they think, who has the keys to that? God. Well, God. But, I mean, how many jokes have you ever heard about the pearly gates and who's standing at like, like Peter. somebody they say, Peter is standing like when you die, they'll say Peter. And I've heard people in the same, you know, in the church I meet with yeah. say, well, you know, Peter's at the pearly gates. Now I'm going to read something to where I'm saying every joke and every story you've ever heard about that could have been 
taken out of context. Because <laughs> I believe when we die, Peter's not going to be standing at the pearly gates because I think it was a different gate. And I'm going to read w- why I say that. And some people probably just, you know, pulled over on the side of the road saying, what do you say? <laughs> but Jesus came to his disciples in verse 14, I mean, uh, 13, in sixteen thirteen of Matthew. He says, who do people say the son of man, which is your point about the genealogy and the virgin birth, right. is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, others Jeremiah, one of the prophets. But who do you, what about you? Who do you say I am? Peter had answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. So he's man and God representing priests. In 17, Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, for this was not revealed to you by man, Simon Peter, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you're Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. And he says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. So when people read this, they concluded that, well, if he has the keys, he's standing at the gate of heaven. He's the one going to be allowing people in. That's what they, that's that, look, I have heard hundreds of illustrations stating that. Right. Well, what I later found out was just from, from reading is that here's Peter, he gets the keys to the kingdom of heaven, which seems to line up with the same kingdom that would happen in their lifetime. Well, Peter was one of the people standing there in Mark 9 when When he said that. And it seems to line up with what Daniel said, that there's going to be a kingdom come that will crush all other kingdoms. It seems to line up with the one Jesus said is near, and now Peter has the keys to it. Well, what do keys do? They unlock doors. Yep. So you can enter the kingdom of heaven. So when Jesus dies and is buried and resurrected, he gathers up in, in Acts chapter 1, and y'all know where I'm going with this, and it's an interesting bit of dialogue here because in verse, where is it? Uh, verse 6 of Acts 1. <laughs> Right after it says Jesus gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. It says, so when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Because they they were thinking about Daniel. Where's all this kingdom stuff that's going to crush? Because now that you've shown, you've become our priest based on what? This ties in with Hebrews 7, 14. Jesus had become their priest and their king based on one simple fact. He's indestructible. He came back. He came back from the dead because he goes around verse three, given look in verse three. I need to read that after his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days. And what did he speak about? Kingdom of God. Kingdom of God. Okay. Well, and he had already said it was near and they said, well, you're going to restore the kingdom. Cause I still think they thought that this was going to be a physical thing where they, if this guy, if our king's indestructible, let's go whoop some people. This you see is what I mean? Be, this Let, is going to be the biggest temple ever built by anybody. On well, yeah, the, and, and you know and that's we true. We can fight, and that's why I think you know when he fed the five thousand, they're all thinking about, well, we got those guys. Now I get it. That's our army. If you can't be killed, oh, we're fixed to become the greatest kingdom ever. Well, you remember what you, you're right because you remember when James and John, they were arguing you know, with everybody and their mom, who's going to be the greatest. And when we have our 12 thrones, where do we want to sit right up close to the front? I mean, they (laughs) still saw it as a physical manifestation of an earthly kingdom that would be established in that lifetime. So let me read this. So his response to, are you going to restore the kingdom? And it's verse seven and eight. He says, it is not for you to know the times and the dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes in you, and you'll be my witnesses. Well, they're like, what? What does that got to do with the kingdom and destroy it? Well, the next chapter, what happens in chapter 2 of Acts? The Holy Spirit comes on them with power. They start speaking in languages that they've never studied. 
Worldwide. Uh, Worldwide. Them guys said, what are these boys, drunk? And they said, no. Well, who stands up in verse 14 based on his confession that Jesus is the Christ, is Lord and the Son of God? Who stands up in verse 14? The one with the keys in his Peter, pocket. Peter, who has the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and now the Spirit is poured out simultaneously with Jesus saying, the kingdom, you know, are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said, wait till the Spirit's poured out. Well, why do you pour something out? It's it's poured out to it so it can become available. You pour a glass of milk so you can drink it. So here comes the Spirit of, of God from heaven, and Peter gets up and preaches the first sermon post Jesus leaving the earth. He says that Jesus died, was buried, was resurrected. He's the Son of God. It was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. He's Lord in Christ. He gets to verse 20 uh, or 37. He's Lord in Christ. The people heard this. They said, what do we do? The same confession, he said, was in verse 36. And Peter replied, well, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you'll receive the doors, gift. Doors, doors open here. Let me open doors the door. Doors open, you'll receive what? The <laughs> gift of the Holy Spirit. That yeah. just poured. You can receive something from heaven, the Holy Spirit of God. So all of us believe that the kingdom of God came at that moment when the Holy Spirit was given, you could now become a part of heaven. Made available to anybody. Man, all woman. men, women. Here yep. it is. The Holy Spirit's poured out for all people because when you receive that spirit, and he said that promise was for you. Look, it's the only time I think in the Bible that looks at us coming to Christ in a future, in one little verse, in a future generation segment is verse 39 because it says the promise well what promise the promise of forgiveness of sins and the gift of the holy spirit is for you and your children and for all who are far off for all whom the lord our god will call well how does god call us through jesus the same sermon peter preached that's how god calls people that's why we go out as flawed individuals saved by grace and we introduce jesus because the introduction of Jesus is God saying, hey, come follow me. Be a part of our kingdom. Okay. So when those people were baptized and received God's spirit, the actual kingdom of heaven was formed in spirit-filled people on the earth 2,000 years ago, which is why Jesus said the kingdom is near because the spirit was fixed to be poured out. Right. And that's the only way this would make sense. Now, where people are going to disagree with us is they say, well, the kingdom is yet to be established. You see? But then that wouldn't make sense on why Jesus said it, it was It wouldn't near. make sense with the last thing the Apostle Paul is recorded to have said, the last verse in the book of Acts. Bold, because you started with Peter, unlock the doors of the kingdom. Yeah. Why is it the Apostle Paul was boldly and without hindrance, the last verse in the book of Acts, he preached the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, well, he's preaching the kingdom of God. What is he preaching? Mm -hmm. Jesus died, was buried, and raised from the dead. Faith, repentance, baptism. And look, here's the return of Jesus. I got a simple question for everybody. Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, 1 Corinthians 15, 20. Uh, first, the first fruits of those who've fallen asleep, you say, they're all going to be raised from the dead, the, the, the saved. Yep. For since death came through a man, Adam, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man, Jesus. Jesus. As in Adam, all die, so in Christ, all will be made alive. But each in his own turn, Christ the first fruits, that's happened. Then when he comes, end of time, you say, where's the kingdom? When Jesus comes, final return. Judgment Day, those who belong to him. Then the end will come. This is happening quickly. He's on the earth. He's global, returned. Global warming. Global warming, <laughs> yeah. When he ha he, the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father. That'd After be he's us. destroyed all dominion. You're like, Spirit how could people. he hand the kingdom over to God the Father if the kingdom of God wasn't there to be handed over. I mean, 
Yeah. How could you hand it over out mm-hmm. if it wasn't there? I know we got to end, but I want to say this. The kingdom of heaven is bigger than than just spirit-filled people on the earth, which is what we're saying. Right. Peter had the keys to the kingdom of heaven on earth because by introducing and accepting Jesus Christ, you could then get the Holy Spirit, which made you the most powerful, uncrushable thing on, on the earth. That's why he said you're never going to be given to another people because people can't destroy us. That's right. right. They'll try. They'll kill us. But guess what? We have the Spirit of God. Guess what? Exactly right. Spirit of God is eternal. So we'll obviously have some more discussions on this. <laughs> but be open-minded to the fact that when we die, the Spirit will raise our dead body, and Jesus will hand us over to the Father. And Peter has already opened the gates. He's already opened the pearly gates, and he did that 2,000 years ago, Acts Acts 2, and that promises for them, for the people that came after, and for us today. Final little text, 1 Corinthians 4, verse uh, 18. Some of you, he's helping the church out, have become arrogant as if I were not coming to you, Apostle Paul talking, but I will come to you uh, very soon if the Lord is willing, and then I'll find out not only how these arrogant people are talking, but what power they have. Got a little friction in the church. How could he say this if the kingdom of God was not there and the Corinthians were part of it? Next verse, verse 20. For the kingdom of God, listen, is not a matter of talk, but of power. Well, if it wasn't there, how would that make any sense? Y'all it wouldn't make any sense. Y'all to be an arrogant, you know. The kingdom of God is not like that. The well, kingdom is here. We're a part of it, and that gives you confidence because you realize you're the most powerful thing because of God's grace and power on the earth. When I spoke to our king, or our elected president, when I talked to him, you say, did you talk to him about the kingdom of God? Well, yeah, since I'm a <laughs> member of it. You say, well, what was your message of the kingdom? That Jesus came down in flesh 2,000 years ago and died on a cross, was buried, and raised from the dead. I explained that to him. Because you unlocked the gate, just I like Peter. I unlocked the gate, and, and I was just showing him. You say, so all the people were swirling around you, people hollering and carrying on like that, but no one knew what you were saying to our present the, the highest official in the land, right, our president. So, you, because, so kingdom people, it's their obligation and their duty, just like Jesus with Pilate. There was no difference. So I want to talk about that <clears throat> to ne- the king. next time we're together. We'll is, have a, maybe we need a part two on the kingdom. That's right. What the kingdom life looks like with earthly kingdom still going on. So we'll talk about that. Uh, and I'll close with quoting my good friend Kevin Hall again. God bless Al in his ongoing effort to redirect and keep these guys on track with the agenda at hand. Are you going to do this every time? Maybe. I, I mean, y'all you're talking about air me, traffic control. You two podcast. were trained. We're like trains. You're a seminary man, Al, but I, I'm just I trying to keep this cut, tra- so. I'm just trying There's to keep no this rules. train on the track. That's There's, all I'm saying. You know what the number one rule in podcasts are? No rules. No rules. There are no rules. <laughs> See you next time. The only rule, ladies and gentlemen, we have here is there are no rules. See you next time on Unashamed. We are so glad you're watching and listening to the Unashamed podcast. Be sure to like us on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube and iTunes. That's going to keep you up to date with all the new episodes, and it's also going to let other people find out about our podcast. So keep spreading the word and watching and listening to Unashamed with Phil Robertson.